year. Um, before we get into the business, I just want to make a few um, announcements. First of all, a big welcome to Eric Robinson, our, our not so new chief executive. Been here a couple of months with you, Eric, um, but this is your first kind of meeting, formally in post. So, welcome to Eric. The second thing I wanted to do, just because it's the first opportunity I've had publicly, is to say um, how uh, how grateful I am to all our staff who really did pull, pull out all the stops for the Three Queens um, event a couple of weekends ago. Um, it was just a fantastic uh, opportunity really to showcase um, uh, not just Wirral but the whole of, of Merseyside and I think uh, our staff um, really did go the extra mile in terms of making sure everybody was safe, um, you know, that, that they could move around easily and it was a really, a really good event and, um, and it was a family event, lots of uh, children enjoying the, the sunshine, etc. So I, I just want to formally thank all of us. It would be invidious to see without anybody in particular, but I want to thank all of our staff who work with the other agencies to make sure it was a brilliant, brilliant event. And I know, um, you know, we had 1.3 million visitors to the city region. I think we had about 70,000 over on the world side. Um, and it was just a brilliant, a brilliant uh, weekend. Really. So thank you to uh, all of our staff who conformed me. <coughs> okay. Right. Um, the other thing that we need to go do, just um, as per usual, item one is the members' code of conduct, declarations of interest. Do any cabinet members wish to declare any interest, Stuart? Thank you, Chair. I'd like to declare personal and prejudicial interest in agenda items eight and then. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else? No? Okay, fine. Uh, item 2 of the minutes uh, of the, the last meeting. Can you, we agree that our sign was a true record? Does that agree? Yeah. 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 Okay, um, now obviously I've been made aware that there are um, a number of members of the public here for item 8. Beachwood and Valentine Community Housing Association transfer of engagements to the mm -hmm. Housing Trust. So, with the agreement of the cabinet, um, Stuart's leaving the room. With the agreement of the cabinet, I'll, I'll take that as the first item. Is that agreed? Yeah. Okay. Just let Stuart depart. Okay. So, I'm going to ask. Um, George Davis, the cabinet member, to introduce this item and um, we'll, we'll take it from there. So, George, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to make it uh, clear that only today, in fact, this evening, I have just received a petition from uh, the board members of Peter and Valentine Housing Association with a petition which is regarding the statement written below, which basically says. We, the tenants and residents of Beechwood and Ballantyne Estate, do not want Beechwood and Ballantyne Estate housing for some change to transfer its assets to the Ludlow Housing Group. We want you to find another organisation other than the Ludlow Housing Group by using a more transparent method of selection that is acceptable to the tenants and residents of Beechwood and Ballantyne Estate. And that's signed by some 250 um, tenants from the estate. Um, uh, in, some, in some instances, by um, you know about five or six people from the same address or whatever, it doesn't make a difference. It's 250 names there. I, uh, as the cabinet member of, of um, two provisions, spoken to the uh, director of law and also to the leader of the council, and basically thought that with this coming tonight in front of us, that um, I should refer this back to the Regional Valentine Health Association. To reflect upon and that we defer any decision on this item this evening and bring it back to a future cabinet, hopefully by the 29th of uh, June, this is the next cabinet meeting. So I want them to reflect upon this, this um, um, petition and, and to find out the. Well, I do know some of the things that have been involved over the last two days implicitly with. Beachwood and Valentine and with the Residents Association in terms of 
to get to a solution to, um, to bring here to Mass. But this position is new to me, it's come tonight, and I don't think it'd be right, Chair, that we um, take this item tonight on the basis that this is right. So, so I want to send this to the Peter Clark Town House Association, the actual thing, and ask for some consideration. Okay, can I, uh, oh, just because obviously I'm a black de deputy leader, but you're also a ward councillor, and so I know you've, you've um, taken a keen interest in this issue. So do, do you want to say a few words? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Chair. Yes, Colleen, I sat on the board for Peter Clark Town for nine years. Recently mm -hmm. came off the board because I was timed out short on each year rules, but um, I don't know that uh, negotiations have been ongoing with the board until I left it a short time ago. There's been about 18 months to two years of planning here. And the chair, it wouldn't be appropriate for me to speak to the report clearly because um, you know, cabinet members ask for the position to be uh, clarified with the petition that's coming today. But I would just want to say, chair, yeah. because as late as yesterday and up to mid-afternoon today, I do know that negotiations and consultation were being undertaken with the community to allay and address fears that they had and my understanding was that they have largely been addressed and that there was satisfaction uh, regarding outstanding masses. So it, is, it has gone a bit of a shock to us to, to hear uh, that there's, there, there is now this petition. However, Chair, if this uh, further short period of consultation uh, you know, does seek to address those concerns, whatever they may be, then I think it will be time well spent. Yeah, I, will, I will want to address the report when, when it does come back to Cabinet in uh, three weeks' time. Thank you, Chair. Okay, so for the benefit of members of the public, so Cabinet is, I'm going to just ask everybody to, to sort of um, vote on this in a minute, but the proposal is that given we just literally had this petition um, this evening, about half an hour ago, um, we're um, recommending a, a deferral. Um, to give us more opportunities to try and get to the bottom of the, the issues that the um, signatories are concerned about. And obviously with a view to trying to come to some agreement in time, but hopefully for the next calendar meeting at the end of June. Um, so that's basically what's being moved by a calendar member um, this evening. Uh, so I hope that's clear to members of the audience, members of the public for residents and tenants from Victoria. So I'm going to ask Cabinet, uh, can we agree to that deferment? That agreement to be agreed. Is that second bit? Sorry, I need to form the second bit. Cabinet members will propose it. And we second it, so Anne will second it. So that's agreed. Uh, we'll defer it until um, uh, a future Cabinet meeting, hopefully for the one at the end of June. And hopefully we can come back with a full report uh, based on um, further discussions around the petition. Okay, that agreed, Cabinet? Okay, thanks very much. That's a public, so that's the decision. I hope that um, is clear. Um, and I will come back in, in hopefully a few weeks' time. Okay, thanks very much for your attendance. I'll just pause and allow people to leave if they so wish. Thank you. Thank you.
11 in the, um, in the report. I'd just like to draw attention to your point two in particular, um, which will, going forward, be looking at us uh, agreeing an approach to determine our risk appetite um, and arrangements for a job in council plan, which we'll be starting to develop, as you know, in the next um, the next weeks, coming weeks. So that's uh, you know, going to be a key, a key issue for us as, uh, as, as leadership of this cabinet and the uh, administration. Um, but I would like to point out, Chair, it really is just for adoption for us this evening. But I just want to um, pay uh, a bit of credit, really, to my claim and this team, the, the risk and insur uh, insurance team across the council. And in particular, draw attention to a member of the team, Simon Hutchinson, as one of the senior advisors, who's been put, put, put forward for an award for the Association of Local Authority Risk Managers. Simon, um, our, our, we, we've got a very, very good reputation on the world, which has been 10 years in the making on our um, corporate risk management. And um, Simon has been instrumental in helping to shape some government legislation and in best practice across the sector and helping other local authorities to um, you know, manage their risk effectively. And he's up for a national award. Um, which is going to be awarded in Birmingham on the 22nd of June. And uh, you know, he's, he's been nominated for that, so we wish him very well. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to thank the team for the work, the continuing work they do, because clearly although risk, um, you know, the risk and insurance team work principally on developing the policy, it's all the teams across the council who have to implement um, you know, the corporate risk strategy. So um, it's really important that we um, you know, do recognise that this is a, a key and important area of our corporate governance. I don't forget, of course, what this really does is resists, you know, claims against the authority and, you know, saves with resources and reputational risk as well. So they are doing a great job there, uh, Chair. I would like to, you know, commend them for that and um, ask Catherine to endorse the revised policy. Thanks. Thanks, Sarah. Um, and can I add my congratulations as well to Mike and his team? Um, I, I, I know that we are um, regarded nationally as a, a, an example of practice around this, this area. I think as the, the policy says, you know, we, we do live in an increasingly uncertain world, particularly around fi financing and funding, and that I think will continue. And, and therefore it is important, as it says in the policy, that we become a risk-aware organisation and, and risk management is embedded you know, um, in all aspects of what we do. Uh, I think that's absolutely crucial. So, um, uh, very happy to endorse your uh, comments <coughs> and thank the team. And um, uh, we've been asked to uh, adopt the risk, the draft risk management policy, which is included um, uh, as a, uh, an appendix to the report. So, is that agreed, Kevin? I agree. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, that takes us then on to support services. Item four is the site of the former Foxfield School in Douglas Drive Mall. Uh, Adrian? Yes, Chair. The, uh, the district board is asking um, us to declare the former Foxfield uh, School site as a service requirement and that we can uh, dispose of it. Um, uh, members of the public will probably be aware of what, that the that we were successful in securing funding for, to build a new Foxfield School, and that was opened on the 2nd of March. The situation with the existing uh, 3.6 acres is that it's uh, a saleable asset, and uh, it's not a building that's in very good condition, certainly not suitable for educational use anymore. It will be necessary to get secretary state uh, approval because it's a former school site with certain conditions attached to it, but we anticipate that it would be a problem that there may be objection there. And so the um, recommendation is to proceed and to demolish it as quickly as possible to avoid the risk of backwards. So I'm uh, thoroughly in favor of that in fact, before we can go ahead with that. Okay, thanks, Adrian. Um, can we agree that, Kevin? Agree to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, that takes us now to the point of uh, five, which is freedom of entry considerations, HMS student and TS Institute. Adrian, you're again. Yes, that's very well on that one. Um, I think it's well known that um, 
the occasion as a student, it's, uh, I believe it's still the most formidable warship of floats. Well, I think perhaps the Americans got a couple of models on it. Um, it's a nuclear power ship. It is not carrying out of bombs. But um, the, the principle here is that, it's, uh, that, that it's, uh, the requirement is that we do this sort of thing quite frequently over the years, that we offer um, the for feeding of the power both to the crew and also to the ship, a boat I should say, and also to the uh, sea cadets in a Genesis suit, which of course is not a ship, it's a building, where the sea cadets uh, gather here on the middle. And so recommendations are freedom of entry to the borough, so we can all march from town and have a proper civil section, and then we call a special meeting uh, in order to confer that uh, 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 mission on them, and that the uh, and then the assembly may be held on the 20th of September. Perfectly routine thing, we always do it for um, our forces, so I recommend that we make the recommendations. Yeah, if I have my support to that, um you know, there are, as the report says, there are very close links um, uh, between the vessel and the borough. And I, I know the sea, cadet, sea cadets do a fantastic job, uh, particularly for kind of young people in the, in the borough. Uh, they, they really do do a good job. So happy to endorse your uh, recommendations, Kevin. Can we agree that? Really? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, so that then takes us on to the leisure, sport and culture item, which is item six, review of the municipal golf course offer in world. Chris, please. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, this report provides an overview of the municipal golf offer on world and seeks approval to undertake the procurement process. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> to seek the delivery partner for the council's current golf offer. The courses included in this report are Aaron Park, which is an 18 court hole golf course, plus a 9 hole pitch and foot. Brackenwood, which is an 18 hole. The Warren, which is a 9 hole course. Walsley Beach, 18 hole pitch and foot. And Kings Parade, mini golf. The municipal golf course at Hoy Lake is not included as this is part of the separate development company being considered. <coughs> the reason this course of action is being recommended is that the council is facing significant further reductions to its net budget and needs. I'm sorry, I'm going to stop. Can we try yeah, and take it? Up to there. Oh, excuse me, sorry. Yeah, if I can continue. <laughs> <laughs> since, uh, since my colleague is uh, <laughs> suffering, as we can hear. Let us go ahead and try this once again, please. 
Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Pat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a few, um, a few additional comments from me. I mean, I think the first thing to say is this is not a proposal to sell off the golf courses in one of the municipal golf courses. I think there's been some uh, misunderstanding of what this uh, report is about. It's about trying to find an alternative provider that will still enable us to provide affordable golfing for every resident of the world. Um, will hopefully enable us to run it um, at a break-even point and, and not have to subsidise it to the tune that we do at the moment. And thirdly, we'll actually invest in some wild golf courses and, and improve the offer. But I must stress, this is not um, us standing off the golf courses. Um, but I think given the financial challenges that we've got, it is absolutely essential <coughs> that we do explore alternative delivery models like this. And we'll have to do this on a whole range of services going forward. And uh, uh, golf is, is no exception. So um, I, I think it is. Um, uh, appropriate that we do go out to the marketplace and find out who, out, who is out there that may be interested in delivering this for us. Now, obviously, Chris, you'll bring back a further report on all this to Cabinet uh, before we make any, any further decisions. And you've all, already mentioned the importance of consulting with staff, um, trade unions, etc., in, in terms of the, uh, uh, the people who currently are involved in running our local courses. So I think that's as much as we're saying. Um, so, with those um, additional comments, uh, I'll be asking Cabinet to um, yeah. support Chris's recommendation at item 15. Does that agree? Agree. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and that then that takes us on to adult social care and public health, item 7, which is smoke free policy. Chris, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, this has been produced in the context of um, the Council's decision last year to, the to adopt the local declaration on tobacco control. Smoking remains a significant issue for Wirral, and one in five deaths are attributed to smoking. Smoke-free arrangements contribute to reduction in smoking by individuals. Many organisations in the health service are now smoke-free, and as part of the broader health service, Wirral Council is the lead organisation for public health on Wirral and we need to ensure that we take action ourselves. We recognise the proposals are not necessarily easy to enforce. However, this should not prevent the adoption of the policy as it provides a platform for improvement. Legal and health and safety advice has been taken and all material risks that have been identified. And we're looking to gain cabinet approval so that this can be placed on an organisational policy framework. Thanks very much, uh, Chris. I mean, I think we, we've all um, we've all supported the drive to uh, move to a kind of smoke-free environment um, for all the reasons that you've mentioned. I think this is a further step on that, that road, uh, which which I fully endorse. So, uh, maybe just asking cabinet. Um, this has moved the recommendation. Can we move that recommendation in item 30 in paragraph 13? Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay, thanks, Chris. Okay, we've dealt with item 8. Um, so uh, I've not been informed of any other business in the public part of the agenda. I now we need to um, move the relevant recommendation to exclude the press and the public, so I'll, I'll just read, read this out. So I'll, come up, I'll recommend that under section 100A, uh, brackets 4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of foreign items of business on the grounds that they involve the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined by the relevant paragraphs of part 1 of scheduled, sorry, Sorry, which is paragraph three, um, schedule 12A as amended to this act. The public interest test has been applied and favours exclusion. Yeah, and the reason, just to make it very clear, the reason why we're moving this exemption is because the report uh, contains commercially sensitive information. So I'll formally move that um, recommendation. Is that a second? Is that is that recommendation agreed? Agreed. Ask Cabinet to vote on that. Those in favour? Anybody against? Okay, so that's unanimous. 